Welcome to the Trumpet of the Last Few Days. I'm Stanley Farrar. And I'm Robert Farrar. And I'm Joshua Farrar. The tyrannical controller of when we start and when we stop recording. For a moment. <laughs> <laughs> but looking at the politics of the day, the Inspector General has been taking and investigating and Ch uh, let's see, what's her name? Chow was her last name. Elaine Chow. Um, it's McConnell's wife, Elaine Chow, for corrupt dealings with China. While in the and, Treasury Department. And yes, while in the Treasury Department. What the what he ended up coming up with was yes, what she was doing was unethical but not illegal. So they've dropped it. So what exactly was she doing? Uh, she was making backdoor deals for her company with the communist Chinese. I'm pretty sure and that using is... The... Pretty sure that is illegal. She was a... Yes, it is illegal. She was also using the um, government dime to arrange meetings with her dad and various people within the communist Chinese hierarchy for business dealing. When asked about it, it Elaine Chow stated that, is quoted as having stated, I don't know if she actually said it, but that's what she's quoted as saying is that advancing her family's business was advancing the government and the country. Hey, to be fair, she is just following the example of our esteemed president. Yes. That is true. She is. She's just following the example of our, our uh, the pretender in chief. <laughs> and, you know, they are they are very good at pandering to their government allies, even if they mm -hmm. are the opposing party. But it does take and show you what the Democrats think of McConnell. Because if, if that had been Trump or one of his family, they'd be screaming for him to be arrested and thrown in prison. Or even a less extreme example, if that was someone like Cruz. Oh yeah, they would be out for his head. But because so that tells us McConnell is a Democrat operative. And before anyone goes screaming, he, not literally a Democrat operative, most likely. But he is definitely a friend of the Democrats. Yeah, he's no friend to the Republican. And he hates the conservatives. And he's corrupt as a snake. But um, the only reason I believe this is opinion that. Uh, that he t took and came out and said that that if Trump is nominated as as the nominee for the Republican Party, he would support him. I believe that the reason he stated that, that was strictly because he knew that that if he took and came out against Trump, they'd be calling for, uh, the Republicans would be calling for his removal from office. Thing is, well, you know, he, should be anyway. only, he didn't even stick around for Trump's CPAC speech. No. He, he's very good at being two faced. Oh, he has declared that he is the head of the Republican Party. But, but um, the numbers show that Trump is. Well, he wants to pull a Pelosi. There can't, there can't be two heads of a party. 
like I said, he wants to pull a Pelosi. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't necessarily want, well, he knows he can't be president, so he wants to pull the strings from behind the scenes. Yeah. Of course, Trump could take and put a stop to that hurry. All he has to do is run for the uh, for the House of Representatives from Florida. In 2022. Run for the, uh, the House of Representatives from Florida. Impeach Harris and Biden. Uh, take uh, uh, and take over the uh, the presidents legally, and then rerun in twenty twenty four, and go for another four years as president. <laughs> <coughs> uh, that is one of those amusing thought exercises that I do not believe is ever going to happen, but Nor it would should. definitely entertain Nor me if it did. <laughs> No, I don't believe it'll ever happen either. But um, it is a an interesting thought, a thought process. Now, everything points to the fact that the vast majority of the people in D.C. are corrupt. Well, they are politicians. Assange after all. came out and Assange came out and said that it when the information they they had comes out on people in Washington, and that that um, seventy five percent of them would be ruined because of their criminality. And my thoughts on the matter is, then why haven't you released it? You've got yeah. it. Why haven't you released it? Why are you waiting? I don't believe he has it. I think it's more of this QAnon uh, well, misinformation nonsense. That is very likely, but I posit a second option. He is afraid of being Epstein. Allow me to posit a third option. Oh, well, that's possible. He wants to use it as leverage for a possible pardon in the future. Okay, that's another. That would be a possible option. Because that's the only the way he's going to get the Democrats to take and to, um, pardon him. So I mean, he shouldn't even <clears throat> need to be pardoned. Well, he didn't really do anything wrong. Exactly. Well, it has. It was presented to Trump to pardon him, and Trump did refuse to do it. No, not pardoning Snowden. I can understand. Assange, I can't. Well, Snowden. Uh, turned over classified information to the military. He should be in prison. Assange isn't even an American citizen. Yeah. Is Snowden? Yeah. Snowden was, yeah. I wasn't sure because there's a Lord Snowden as well from in Britain. Yeah, I don't think it's that note. The um, <clears throat> we find that their paranoia is running amok in um, as evidence the of the totally legitimate raid on the Capitol on the fourth of March. That absolutely happened. Don't you? Uh, <laughs> don't you question it? <laughs> we definitely didn't food poison hundreds of uh, national guardsmen for nothing. 
Yeah. They definitely have a legitimate reason for asking the National Guard to stay two more months. <laughs> oh, they're now talking se till September. Uh, just watch next time. After that, they'll push it out till the end of COVID. And uh, since we all know I... COVID's never going to end. I personally think that they need uh, that the they need to get on and start spreading in, 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 inter, well rumors on the internet about people coming after them in Washington how they're going to come and raid the capital on certain dates to take and and kill off the, the Democrats and the corrupt Republicans and keep them in a lockdown phase for the next four years. <laughs> and of and course, as accomplish? soon as they decide that it's a, uh, a boy cried wolf situation and stop turtling up for it, then you march on the Capitol. The thing is, they, they won't stop turtling up <laughs> for it. Because that's what they want, is to, <laughs> is to keep everything locked down. Well, what it will, you want to know what it will accomplish. If they don't take and start taking it as a boy cried wolf situation and they take it seriously, then it, uh, then it screams to, uh, to the entire nation that they are mentally unfit because of being paranoid. Also, and it'll make it to where thus, more states will withdraw their it national guard. Position. As some of the states already have. That's true. It makes we're more of Arkansas has. Now another I think Oklahoma another thing it too. does, it keeps it keeps the blue states National Guard in Washington. So when the it, when the red states secede, then uh, the blue states National Guards are already tied up in Washington, so they cannot take and interfere or militarily with the secession speaking of secession the texas G gop has endorsed texas whether you like the term or not josh <laughs> <laughs> like the term gop or just uh, texas take it. texas 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 the Man, texas I exit texas i hate that word they could have rebranded it as anything more interesting. It's the most catchy of all the exit ones. Because <laughs> at least it has half the name in it. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like Trisket. <laughs> and we all know Triscuits are <laughs> inferior to Wheat Thins. We all know Triscuits are inferior to Wheat Thins. Uh, Triscuits I are, in fact, thought, inferior um, to Wheat Thins. You might as well be... I was always th thinking when it comes to Triscuits, you might as well just go out and eat some grass. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about right. I found out recently... Uh, <coughs> I may have said this before, but probably not on the show, of where the name Triscuit came from and why it was marketed the way it was. It was uh, it was branded that way because it was the only electrically baked snack on the market at the time. It was the electric biscuit. Yeah. The electric brisket. The triscuit. Okay, triscuit. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. There's even uh, lightning bolts on the, the boxes still. When you take and you look at the bill that's before Texas's um, House of Representatives, it will put, if it passes, it will put it on the ballot in November for the people of Texas to vote on it to whether or not to secede. So they're not taking and saying, okay, we as the representatives of the t people of Texas choose to vote on whether or not to secede. They're talking about putting it into the people's hands on Making whether they decide to secede. 
which is a smart way to do making it. Making it a referendum. Oh yeah, because politically it's like, oh, we, we didn't vote for that. It was the people who voted for that. But they also can say, well, we can't go against the will of the people. There's been a, sh and with the GOP supporting it, it's probably going to pass. Hmm. Unless they have a divide it probably in, the, pass. in the state. And um, I expect that it will, t if it gets the referendum, it'll go through. Just need to sort out the power issue first. Get off of Let's them, uh, get off of them, uh, environmentally friendly stuff and start up the good old fashioned coal generators. Well, see, that's one thing. If they secede, they have no, there's no, uh, they're not bound by any of the environmental restriction. Yeah. So they, so they can go back to the, oh, uh, the, they go nuclear. Which is a smart thing to do. Well, it's not good for your neighbors when you go nuclear. <laughs> All those missiles. Depends on your neighbors. <laughs> True. When Japan went nuclear, that was very good for both China and Korea. And... <laughs> no, that's when we went nuclear on Japan. <laughs> but... Um... Uh, Japanese yeah. imperialism will it's, never not be funny to me. Mississippi already yeah. has <laughs> the um, Mississippi has taken and has a bill before their your house for secession as well. And I believe there's another state that has too. Well, now that the Democrats have successfully pushed through the bill that will permanently rig all future elections, they've got no choice. Yeah. It's move now or get stuck. Yeah. It means that the Greater Idaho Movement needs to move faster. <laughs> I do like the Greater Idaho Movement. Yeah, that that would give the red states another port, only a port on the west coast instead of on the east. So the Greater Idaho Movement, by the way, for those of you watching, is a movement that's going on right now among the rural counties of Oregon and, and some in California. And some in California, in Northern California, to secede from Oregon and California and join Idaho, making it the state of Greater Idaho, which just sounds really funny to me because I never would have, never in my life would have thought of attaching the word greater to Idaho. Well, could you imagine uh, the Dakotas <laughs> or the Carolinas or even Virginia rejoining? With each other and becoming Greater Dakota, Greater Carolina, and Greater Virginia? You know that wouldn't fly because they were never the greater before that. They were just, it was the Carolinas. Yes, and then it was just but Virginia, everybody, it would be. everybody likes a sense of uh, pompousness when they're creating their own thing, especially when it's a derivative. It's like turning the well, the Roman Empire they... into the Holy Roman Empire because we are their successors and we are totally better and greater than them. <laughs> well, you, you've heard of Magna Graecia, right? No. Magna Graecia was a part of the Italian peninsula that had been settled by the Greeks that the Romans took over. Ah. That's basically Slovenia and Croatia now, isn't it? No. No, this, it, it's was just south of Rome. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you were talking about the peninsula, be, not the down as far as the hill. adjoining coastline. No, no, it was actually part of the peninsula, and they couldn't just be Greece. They had to be Magna, Greek. <laughs> exactly. Greater Greece. <laughs> <laughs> and Britain... They didn't have the power... They didn't have the authority of regular Greece, but they were still greater Greece. And England, as soon as they decided to try to create their little empire, had to become Great Britain, because being just Britain wasn't good enough for them. <laughs> just by adding iron. <laughs> thing about it, when you take and you look at um, 
what if the red states, uh, the red county uh, counties in Washington decide to join it? Well, then you'd have even greater Idaho. If, if they decide to, they, they, then Idaho would be one of the, well, would, by mass of land, would probably be the, the third largest state in the union. We'd yeah. have to name it the greatest Idaho. But we uh we gotta let the great Idaho movement finish first before we can go on to Super Saiyan Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> we are the Think great about it. Well... Idaho starts carving more and more territory out of the US <laughs> until it takes over. <laughs> I I, w- I really, really wouldn't be surprised though if the red states secede. And act and and either negotiate a exit or crush the left. Uh, they they uh, that the red counties in a lot of these blue states may uh, could easily secede from their their um, states and file petitions to join the the country that's risen up out of the red states. Pretty soon it'll be the United States of America and the the new country of Greater Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Texas would never go with that. <laughs> so there's a divide. I can see the American Republic. <laughs> so there's a divide between the between the Texas loyalists and the Idaho loyalists and the Yodo. <laughs> Because, because, like I said, I could I could actually see um, the red states uniting under the like the Republic of Tech, uh, Republic of the United States, not the United States, the Republic of of um, of America, the America, yeah, or something along those lines. While, well, let's be honest, the United States of America. It and the Confederate States of America are really uncreative names. Well, you know what's funny is a Confederacy means a union. Yeah. So just based on, on raw denotation, they were the same thing. They were very <laughs> uncreative names. Didn't yeah. even have the grace to name yourself something like a, a single word like Canada or Mexico or Brazil. United States of America. Well, what, what about um, the uh, the U- United Socialist States? Uh, it's... United Soviet Socialist Republic. Yeah, but they had to they had to be crushed out of being a good name first. What you mean, Russia? Yeah. <laughs> But that was just because they they had picked up so many other countries that they couldn't just be Russia anymore. Yeah, kind of like uh, tell that to the Roman of, Empire, uh, United Kingdom. Tell that to the Roman Empire. Well, the problem is that the more people you have in your little empire that have a discernible identity that uh, they don't want to get rid of, the more uncreative your name has to be in order to allow them to keep their other name that they identify under. That's why all of the states in the United States have an individual, short, concise, actual name, but all together we are the United States of America. Okay, short, concise. Have you seen Louisiana? Well, I would have used Connecticut as an example, but fine if you want to be uncreative. New Hampshire. Besides, Louisiana was French. French never come up with anything good. (laughs) What is that? Strike four, strike six on our (laughs) channel? Actually, we have yet to receive a single strike. (laughs) I think we have yet to receive a single complaint because I'm the only one still watching on YouTube, and that's just to make sure the things actually work. (laughs) We got a lot of views on other channels, though. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, YouTube definitely isn't promoting us. Yeah. But naturally, as a side effect, we're not getting strikes on YouTube either. <laughs> That's true. Uh, oh, I, I, I honestly believe that the reason we're not getting more views is because YouTube is not trying to promote us in any shape, size, or form. They're just basically a um, not pretending we don't exist. Yeah. Which is fine. It's not for them anyway. But the, um, technically speaking, the, if they would take and apply the same kind of pressure to the Democrat politician that the Democrats have been applying to the Republican politician, we would see something crack. Mm -hmm. Probably their sanity, but <laughs> we would see something crack. <laughs> I'm sorry, but our men and our women isn't a, isn't their sanity cracking? Well, no, you forgot the, the two like latest it, but... updates where Mr. Potato Head is no longer allowed to be male. Never yeah, mind about right. Mrs. Potato Head being female, but Mr. Potato Head can't be a guy anymore. And the Muppets are canonically, according to Disney, now racist. But that's not that's not politicians doing that. <laughs> we were talking about politicians here. Well... The thing about it is, is that I'm talking about ranting, raving lunatics. Some of them already like do Hitler. that. Yes, but they'll be demanding for blood in the streets. If, if the right was to treat them the way they treat the right, there would be uh, there would be uh, demands for blood. For instance, if the right, if the right were to go through and dox the de uh, the Democrat congressmen and their bodyguards and the families of their bodyguards, showing where they lived, show where uh, where the um, their kids go to school, show where the uh, the routes they take back and forth to work, take and go through and sh and show the utilities in the area, the gas lines, the water lines, the, the electric uh, grid points. If they were to go through and show uh, show where the water treatment plants and how to access those water treatment plants, and if they were to take and go through and and um, put all that out on the internet. For the world to see, they would free. Now they do all that sort of thing to the Republicans and to the the lawyers of the Republicans. But if someone was to do it to them, they would have a mental breakdown. And I'll be honest, I honestly think it'd be a good idea to do. But um, <laughs> Cyberbullying, no the politics as, edition. <laughs> there is such thing as, you know, human decency, where you don't do that and instead choose to love your neighbor. <laughs> we're not talking decency, we're talking politics. Well, welcome to the religious yeah. aspect of this, where you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. Because <laughs> after all... There's a there's an old statement. Statement: The enemy sets the rules for co uh, of combat. Yes, but that's in combat. We're not in actual combat here. <laughs> we should be though. And actually, and I actually completely... we are in actual combat. We we're just too stupid to know about it. And I actually completely disagree. The enemy does not set set the the rules for combat. The aggressor sets the initial bar, and then the other person raises it, and then you have a c continuing cycle of increased aggression. Not if you have a nuke. Yes. 
I mean, you could just go straight <laughs> overkill, but that's still part of the that's still part of the cycle of aggression. Well, you have to understand, though. I I do view them as the enemy, and we are at war, but not literal war. So mm, that's because nobody's had the spine to actually take up arms and do something about it. But if you're um, going to go to war, you need a good. But you're you, right. We're not. Mm, you need a Boston massacre. Need a good plan. <laughs> And even then, they're going to be smeared as terrorists, but I'm pretty sure they were smeared as terrorists even back during the colonists. Well, we all know that the winner always writes the history books. Right. And the thing about it is, is when you take, well, look at what the um, Secretary of the Navy came out with rec uh, just recently. They stated that out of the United States Navy, they have to purge everyone of extreme who has extremists and dissident viewpoints well we already know from the from the way they dealt with the national guard that anybody who is is right of of hitler is oh, wait um, a second. you said extremist or dissident views well the vast majority right. of the military is right leaning, so they're going to purge. They need so to they purge. all be dissident. No, they need to purge all the lefties out of the military. <laughs> the, Except for the fact that when they talk d dissidents, they're talking about dissidents to the to the regime, but, not dissidents um, within the military. But when it comes to the military, the lefties are by far the minority. They are the dissidents. They're the ones who need to be purged. <laughs> they're not Except as the small of a that, minority as you may think. They were when I was in, but the, uh, they the, they are the, the minority anymore. They are not as small of the minority as you may think. The thing about it is, when they're talking dissidency, they're talking about anyone who believes that America should be independent. Anybody who believes is that we should have honest elections instead of rigged elections. Anybody who believes that uh, the government shouldn't be controlling every aspect of our lives, anybody who's against um, the, the social welfare net, anybody who is opposed to um, high taxation, anybody who, who takes and believes in God, anybody who takes and, and believes that abortion is evil, Anybody who takes and believes that if the government gives you an order to kill your your fellow citizens, that you should uh, should not obey it, it th uh, those are all dissident positions. And extremists, according to what they were, or, um, with, with when they interviewed the National Guard. If you held any kind of a a centrist position, you were considered an ext uh, an extremist. If you took and voted for Trump, you were considered an extremist. If you supported Republicans, you were an extremist. If you took and uh, believed that that the United States isn't e e corrupt and evil, you're an extremist. It was a um, very rigid pattern that they were going through trying to determine who was and who was not a, a, an extremist when they brought in the National Guard to Washington. Because they didn't want any of those evil right-wingers taking be a, within the ranks where they might be in debt. But this memo, what it wants to do is essentially remove anybody who's not in with the a the agenda removed mm -hmm. anybody who's a straight white male they won't remove after all they're all racist as if they have Ancestors. very much control over that they're racist so Ancestors. on a side note there is a uh there is a trending video i think it came from tiktok 
but I'm not certain, of this guy who claims that he's figured it out. He has decided to create a brand new uh, <laughs> sexual orientation. He calls it being super straight. Um, where you are straight, but not attracted to any trans. So, but they can't call you transphobic for it because that's just your sexuality. You can't help it. <laughs> okay. So under his definition, I'd be super straight. Yeah. <laughs> you can't help it. It's just your sexuality. You can't help it. You were born that way. <laughs> And you know the people that go through and say, "Well, we we can't help it. We were born this way." Um, completely ignore the fact that the Bible, God never takes and gives us an order to do something that we don't have the capability to or he either doesn't give us the capability. follow or reject. That He doesn't give us the capability to follow or reject. And so, being that He specifically forbids. homosexuality in scripture he will give them the ability to not act upon that or deliver them from it if they will take and follow him it also Unless, forbids course, mutilating yourself doing well, things like chopping off your private parts but if you're well, a Calvinist yes, it's very specific about that their, their argument fits great for Calvinists, though, because, I mean, according to Calvinists, you can't help it anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have no free will as far as the Calvinists are concerned. So the, uh, so God's responsible for everything. I mean, and sinful people are going to be sinful, and, you know, those who aren't going to be saved aren't going to be saved. So why even bother? What is even the point if you're go uh, of believing in anything? If you're going to wind up in, as, as someone who believes that you have no control over anything. Ego. I am one of the select few. You're not. I'm greater than you are because God likes me. He doesn't like you. Otherwise, the natural conclusion of Calvinism is honestly nihilism. You don't know, and you can't control it. So, what's the point? Well, there's that, or, or like I said, the ego. But there's also another one. God loves everybody, and He will save everyone, no matter how bad they are, or what condition, or what they. It That's doesn't true. matter how evil which or wicked they are. Would make God an unjust God, which by connection would make God a mm -hmm. liar which would, by connection would make him not worth serving in the first place, because if he's lying about that, what else is he lying about? Well, re remember though, <laughs> that if God is in absolute control of everything, God said that it's not, well, the Bible says that it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, since God is in control of everything, and he wants everyone to come to repentance. Everyone will be saved. If I recall the scripture Universal correctly, though, <laughs> it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It does not say, so everyone. It says, whosoever shall believeth I'm, in him. I Very never said, specific. Listen. Yes. Gehenna but, but see, doesn't the exist in the universalist one. mind. <laughs> And the, log lo the logical conclusion of Calvinism is God is contradictory to himself. Either God is responsible and an evil God because you have no free will. Or he's going to accept everybody, no matter how evil they are. Well, no, no. See, God is still... God is still bound by his character. God, The Bible itself says that God cannot tell a lie. It's impossible because his character prohibits it. So if God is bound by his character and it's not his will that anyone should perish, then logically no one should perish because he's in control of everything. 
but wait, we know that those who don't serve him will burn in hell. So, God is a contradiction to himself? Or Calvinism makes well, no according sense? To the uni- well, the universalists claim to be the ultimate Calvinists. Well, yeah, it's the logical conclusion, but in bi- trying to be logically and trying to be logically consistent, they're logically inconsistent now, about by, the nature by of By being logically uh, consistent, they are calling God a liar, is what yes. they're doing. Yes. And if God is a liar, then nothing he has ever said can be trustworthy. And if nothing he can ever said can, can be trustworthy, then how do you even know heaven exists? God's the one who told us it, ex- it existed. Who's to say we're not all well, see, going to wind settled. up in hell? A lot, a lot of people have uh, have rejected the notion of both heaven and hell. <clears throat> you have the materialists that uh, <coughs> that are teaching that you should uh, should serve God just because as it it makes the world a better place but not for a benefit for yourself because there is no benefit or loss. You know what the logical conclusion of that is? Nihilism. Nihilism. There, there's a YouTube channel called Kurtzgesagt. It's an atheist channel and very, very openly atheist. And I, I watched a video from them talking about finding meaning in this world. And I watched it and I was like, wow, all of this is super useless. All that does is make you depressed. Because so, what does it matter? It's all gone by the time you're gone. I, I saw a joke the other day that I yeah. thought was entertaining. It's nihilism. And the joke went along the lines of a nihilist, a socialist, and a neo-Marxist walk into a bar. The bartender says, sorry, we don't serve anyone under 18. Oh, that's a good one. (laughs) That had to have been written by a European or a Canadian. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that is a good one, though. Which is funny because there are a lot of nihilists, neo Marxists, and socialists in Europe. Well, when you reject God, nihilism is the is the ultimate result because there is no hope without God. Everything's meaningless. And if there is no hope except for to obtain everything you can get here, then Marxism makes sense because you want to take from everybody what you can get. Live it up as much as you can. You know what happens to people who live it up as much as they can? They usually end up dead, in prison, or, well, dead, because they'll take their own life because they live in abject misery. Oh, I was going to say, or both. Yeah. Because you wind up like Epstein. It's exactly what he did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you come da- uh, down to it, that's... The way of Hollywood. That's the way of of the um, sports genre where they're pushing the sports people. It's the direction of the politician. A brief amendment, a, amendment to that, though. It is not the way of the sports anime, <laughs> because the sports <laughs> anime is very intense and very focused on a goal. <laughs> It's usually as boring as snot, but, they, but it's but, entertaining in some aspects. <laughs> but when you take and you look at at well, what are they pursuing? Hedonism. And I I know some people say, well, when you're talking about part uh, about politicians, you're not talking nar- you're talking narcissism. You're not talking hedonism. Actually, you can be both. 
you're gonna wanna both. In fact, and I'll I don't think it's that... possible to be a hedonist and not be a narcissist. They're really part and parcel. They do kind of run together. But you, uh, you look well. Look at these uh, these actors and actresses making these political statements, and actually, people think people should put more weight in what they say than than other people. Like they're somebody special. Don't dictate to me. Explain your position. Convince me. Well, I found it hilarious when the, Give... when a news site came out with the fact that people aren't listening to celebrities like they used to. It was always weird that they went to celebrities for political matters anyways, but they've just stopped putting stock in them. Well, it on a blows side my note, mind how many times the media on a side note has gone to people uh, who are actors that are playing a part of a doctor and asking medical advice. I see. What if it's Dr. House, though? (laughs) (laughs) That he just plays house music behind him. But on a side note, it takes a massive narcissist to survive being a nihilist. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Because everyone else just kind of gives up. Because you have to really believe you're, you're something not special to not when nothing else matters. Well, it's like one friend of mine, he stated that he, he, he is apathetic on everything. So whenever so when things go well, he's pleasantly surprised. That's not apathy. Because he, uh, that's nihilism. No, he that's act, nihilism. He cares what happens. He's a nihilist, and but claims to be an a- apathetic. Now, I'm typically a rather apathetic person about most things. However. In my case, specifically, and I can only speak from my own experience in this regard, I have found that the way to be apathetic about most topics is to find a few things that you find extremely important, and everything else just seems worthless by comparison. That is how you develop apathy for things that don't matter. Focus on the things that do. Now, see, I I will agree with you on that. You can be apathetic on things that don't matter. And I have found that that people will take confidence and confuse it for their arrogance and narcissism as well. If you are confident in your position, you believe you're right, they disagree with you, they automatically claim that there's something wrong with you. Yeah, well, those are usually just insecure people who, unable to defeat what you're, what you're saying, want some way to try to undermine you. Speaking of insecure people, my biggest problem has always been with bosses that, uh, whenever, who think that whenever a question is asked, you're questioning their authority, not asking a legitimate question. How's the weather outside? I'm How right dare right you now. speak to me like that? <laughs> <coughs> Don't you know I'm over you? I should be asking you how the weather is outside. <laughs> Actually, people who, who fly off the handle like that can be a lot of fun. <laughs> Unless they control your paycheck. <laughs> yeah.
you're above me. Nobody's above me. <laughs> if anything, you're a lesser being. <laughs> Like, so I was in so much shock. It's unreal. <laughs> it's like it's like I've ha had people taking and just running off, complaining and griping and over nonsensical little stuff. And they t uh, turn and ask ask a question. You look over at them and say, "I'm not affected by such mortal." <laughs> Uh, the biggest downside of arrogance humor, and which is a branch of humor, <laughs> contrary to most people's belief, is the fact that most people don't realize it is a branch of humor. So they take it way too seriously. They don't even, they don't, uh, they, they don't even acknowledge don't that you're joke. joking. <laughs> they, they don't even get it. Well, that's because it's also a form of deadpan humor. Well, yeah. And most people don't understand <laughs> deadpan at all. <laughs> because if you if you do it right you'll say it with a completely straight face and me I might smile after the fact to tip them off that it was a joke but most people won't even do that so the best dead oh, I, I've been jokes. known to smile while doing it and they don't catch it the, another another term for deadpan humor that a lot of people will understand better is dry humor Dry humor is always said in a way that can be as deadpan and as serious as possible, but you're not actually serious. The, the way that most people understand it the best is this is the type of humor you use when you're messing with people. This is how you talk to them when you're telling them to pick <laughs> up, say, blinker fluid or that sort of thing. Or... In my case, re uh, relatively recently, where I told a guy to just put a kink in an extension cord and it'll stop the flow just like a garden hose. <laughs> we need the electricity to stop. Uh, just put a kink in. <laughs> It's, it's it's like I remember, uh, we we were uh, we were taking work on some equipment when I was in the navy. The guy walks, uh, accepts us. Are those wires live? And the other guy turned turned, looked over to him, and says, "That's a good question. Here, put it to your tongue and let's see." <laughs> I, see, I would have said, no, they've been dead for three days. Can't you smell it? <laughs> oh, I would have said, hey, let's find out. <laughs> oh. The thing about it is those wives were just as alive as live could be. Right? <laughs> Playing with live wires is fun, especially when you're playing with a mega. Ever zap someone in the ear while they were asleep? <laughs> no, I've never done that. <laughs> there are people that would take and hook a mega up to ooh, um, a capacitor, wind it up real good, throw it in the uh, urinal. So, uh, I, I work with electricity a lot. So, for the people who don't know, a mega is a mega uh, a mega ohm meter. So basically, it is designed to test uh, resistance for objects that have a large amount of resistance. 
So theoretically, let's say your wires for your for your cables, they are insulated. So you should not have less than a certain amount of mega ohms of resistance between the cable and the wire. Thing about this is to test this properly, you need a lot of voltage. So when you use a mega, it produces a lot of voltage, which not enough to kill anyone, but enough to create a decent static shock. Think about like rubbing your, your uh, socks on the carpet and then zapping someone times six. Now imagine a guy falls asleep <laughs> on 500 volts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, imagine a guy falling asleep <laughs> instead of doing his job. So you breach the leads across his ear and then wind it up and zap him. That's the kind of thing we're talking about here. <laughs> well, if you find this conversation to be electrifying, I'm sure he did too. <laughs> Feel free to share any any similar any similar stories, any similar pranks in the comments. That... And also feel free to hit the like and subscribe button and ring the bell and share this video with your friends, if you have any friends. If you don't have friends, then I suggest you should start with finding friends. And, then and the if you them. have friends and want to get rid of them, you can try the mega <laughs> trick I just told you about. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, see you next time.